So first of all, what antiderivatives do we need to know? Well, here is a list. You should know all of these, like the back of your hand or deep in your heart. And from then, we will also practice substitution. Now here is our first example. And this is almost directly off the, the list, uh, together with some properties of integrals. So when we work this, you know, when you have five times the sign, the constant comes along in the antiderivative. So we will have um, five times minus cosine of t, and then we have minus three, and here, an antiderivative here is the inverse sine, or arc sine, but I will write it as sine to the minus one, and then plus c. And about all we can do is just slightly rewrite. So here is our antiderivative in this case. This next problem is a little bit different. We want to find the specific antiderivative so our answer will not have a plus C in the end. That satisfies, well, here, if you look, I'm using capital P for the antiderivative and little p for, for the function, or so capital P prime is little p. So little p is this function, and then capital P of minus one is zero. This is our initial condition. Well, okay, the first thing we want to do We'll do this in two steps. We want to find this. And I will write cube root as the one-third power because I'm going to use the power rule. This is my first step. This will give me all antiderivatives. There will be a plus C. And then I will use my initial condition. Okay, well, this is 5 ln absolute value of w minus, when we integrate e to the w, we get e to the w, so 7 e to the w. And now this is the power rule, but it's the power rule for integrals or antiderivatives, where we add a power, this will be 4 thirds, divide by the higher power and then plus c. Okay, this is our first step. This is not the final answer in this case. Now, next, I'm gonna use this. So this is the general form, but I have this very specific information that capital P of minus one is zero. So I set zero to equal. Now I evaluate this at minus one. 5 ln absolute value minus 1 minus 7 e to the minus 1 plus and maybe I will clean up this coefficient a little this would be 18 over 4 or 9 over 2 and then minus 1 to the 4 thirds plus c now here, and looking at this is exactly why we need the absolute values here when we integrate one over w, because this is the ln of one, which is zero. And here I have negative seven over e, and then here minus one to the fourth gives you one, cube root of that is also one, so I just have nine halves plus c. Now I can easily solve for C. C is equal to, just move all of this to the other side. I get seven over E minus nine over two. And now I'm ready for my final answer. Okay, so capital, P of W equals, I look here, except I fill in the appropriate value of C. 5 ln absolute value of W minus 7 e to the W. 
This is going to be a plus 9 halves um, W to the 4 thirds. Now here comes my C. It's plus 7 over E minus 9 over 2. Okay, it's a lot of terms. This is our final answer. If we look at this, this is not one that's directly off our list that I showed at the start, but this is from Calc 1 material. Namely, we are going to use substitution. Why? Well, you see, I have a square root. Inside of it, I have a function. So I have an inside function. And then if you think about the derivative of this, there's a multiple of the derivative in this integrand. Okay, so this is substitution where u is what's inside, t to the fifth plus six. Now we must, in an integration by substitution problem, we must turn every single piece of the integral to something of u. You do not want to mix t's and u's at all, okay? So here, in particular, we will replace the dt with something. So the next step, I usually think about five steps for substitution. First, find u, then calculate du. Okay, that's step number two. Then, you know, as we will see, we convert to an integral of u, integrate, and then we go back to t. That's the five steps, u, du, convert to an inter integral of u, integrate, go back to t. Okay, maybe I'll let number them here for the first example. Number one, number two, okay. What is du? It is always, you take the derivative and then times dt, okay? It's always du, you take the derivative of u with respect to t or x or whatever the original variable was and then times dt. Okay, now, if we rewrite this, it might be a little more clear. I have all of this here, t to the fifth plus six, oops. And this part, I am ready to convert to something of u. Remember what I said, every single piece of the integral must be something of u. This is step three. This part, which is not of u, I group it with the dt. Now, very good. These two are clearly equal. I just rearranged things. We look here and it is not exactly, this is t to the fourth dt, this is 5t to the fourth dt, but if I need to solve for what is handed to me in my integral, so t to the fourth dt, well, I can just divide everything by five, right? This is 1 fifth du, okay? So when I go to replace, which is step three, as I mentioned, all of this here, this thing, I will replace with a one-fifth du. Okay, so now, step three, maybe I'll do it over here because this is actually these being equal. Step three, I convert everything to an integral of u. This is an integral. This is a square root of u. This is, as we calculated, one-fifth du. Or you might, if you want to write it as a power, u to the one-half du. That's step three. Step four, we integrate. Step four, when we integrate, we have one-fifth, fifth, excuse me, one-fifth. Then we add a power, divide by the higher power, plus c which maybe we can make this look a little bit nicer. We have here, this is gonna be a two over 15, u to the three halves plus c, but don't stop here. This is with respect to u. And I mentioned our final step, step five, is we go back to t. So two fifths, this is equals, this was equals, this is two, excuse me, two fifteenths t 
2 to the fifth plus 6, the 3 halves plus C. And this is here. This is our final answer. Integration by substitution. And I will say, you notice I never ever mix T's and U's. This is an integral entirely with respect to U, T, excuse me. This integral is entirely with respect to U, as is this one. Let us do one more integral or indefinite integral. Practice antiderivatives. This one you might look at and not know what to do because unlike the last one, it's not so clearly an inside function and um, so you might be a little stumped. <laughs> but you see, in my integral, I have an ln x and I know the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. So you see, I have a function, the natural log, I have a multiple of its derivative also in my integrand. This suggests substitution. Okay, so u is going to be the natural log. du, we take the derivative, 1 over x times dx. Maybe I'll even number my steps like I did in the last one. This is step one. This is step two. The next step will be to convert this to an integral of u. Now I could, again, if you want to rewrite this, here's the part involving u, and then I have a 5 over x dx. This is the part that I group. Okay, and again, if you look, we don't have, it's not a 1 over x dx, handed to us in our integral is 5 over x dx, which you can see, to go from this equation to this one, you just multiply by 5. So this piece, I will put in 5 du, okay? And this will be my step 3, convert to an integral of u. So step 3, convert to an integral of u, I have everything I need. So this is equal to the integral, I have 1 over u times 5 du. Okay, next, we integrate with respect to u. And again, notice there are no x's here. And similarly, there are no u's here. Okay, so we integrate. When we integrate 1 over, we get ln, absolute value of u, plus c. You're not quite done. The last step, step five, is we go back to our original variable, which in this case is x. So this is five ln absolute value, ln of x plus c. And this one here, this is our answer.